Hi, I'm Raul. I'll make you better. That's what I do. And when you're talking about two pros, sometimes, you know, they decide to change the swing. Maybe it's for more distance, consistency. They uh, have errors, you know, they hit the ball in a way they don't know what's going on. And then they go to another swing coach on tour or something like that, which doesn't make sense to me because this is what most people don't understand. Butch Orman, Hank Henning, Sean Foley, Leber, Pete Cowan, your local guru in your local golf club all have the same basic education. Right? That means that if you, the two pro go to another swing coach, they're going to teach you the same shit with a different name. The same shit mechanically, but with a different name. And the risk they all, uh, you know, have is that they, what can happen is like what had happened with Johnny Seng. She changed the swing, lost the game back in 2011. Luke Donald, same thing. He decided to, I want some more distance so I can be major. And he did that, you know, he shifted his swing coach to another one to do that because his current one couldn't do it. And what happened is that he lost his game. 13 years later, he would never win majors. Right? You know, best thought of the day. Nice cup of coffee. Talking about people. So, and other people doing the same thing, right? Like Lydia Ko. When she went to Leber, when she went the first time on the LPGA tour, I was watching what Leber did to her, and what happened was that she had more muscle activity hit the ball with lever, what he, what he was doing. And usually that means that if you do something to someone as a player and it becomes more difficult, uh, it usually spells trouble. That means that you will lose your game, right? And I predicted that. I told people that at the golf forum called Golf Rex. I told them she's going to lose the game. And they were telling me that lever was so great and, you know. And then suddenly she lost the game. And they were all silent. None of them, you know, contacted me and said, hey, Rob, you were right. And I said, yeah, no. Well, people are, you know, kind of weird. Making the decision to go to a swing coach who has the same education behind them. I'm like, why would you do that, Jordan Spite or Luke Donald or Lydia Cole or Anne Van Dam or whatever? Right? Why would you want to do that? It doesn't make sense to me. And they are basically, you know, totally not understanding about the golf swing mechanic at all. Sean Foley was saying that Dan Van Dam had the perfect on top position, right? But there is no correlation between the perfect on top position and impact. There is no correlation there. It's not how it works. And Sean Foley do not understand that. And, and Van Dam, by the way, according to Brandon Chambly, you, you can have some opinions about him, was telling us that he, she had the best fucking swing in golf. And then she goes to Sean Foley. So they can't even agree what's a good swing mechanic is in the, in the business. Well, kind of weird if you think about it. So they all have the same PGA education behind them. So let me tell you a couple of stories. A few years back, I had a guy contact me. <clears throat> he told me, five years I've been trying, and I went through 12, and I think English is not enough, Golf PGA instructors, right? They tried for five years with 12 different PGA instructors. They have all the same dedication behind me, I remember that. And I tried to play with it, it doesn't work. I go back, we do lessons, video analysis, track, you name it. And they're very happy with me. When I go play, it doesn't work. And then he tells me, hey Rob, do you think you can help me? And you have to understand my background. I haven't been teaching anyone at that point. I just been working with Hans to, you know, figure out, you know, how the golf swing mechanics works and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Send me a swing. Send me a swing and I looked at it and I thought to myself, why isn't he doing what he's supposed to do in the golf swing? And you have to remember, 12 different instructors looked at him and they didn't see this. I did it, boom, just like that. Last year, winter, Senator uh, Nelson had won like 18 or 20 events in ski cross in a row. And I was curious, because this is what my skill set lies in. I figured, you know, ski cross is an event where four ladies, you know, they start at the same time and whoever, you know, gets the lead in, in the ski cross, you know, have an advantage because the, the, the course they ski at is very short down the right? 
And she was winning like 18, 20 events in a row. I was like, hmm, that means she's doing something different than the other ladies. So I went there and looked at, uh, you know, the Olympics that she won. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what she's doing. It took me two minutes to identify what she was doing differently than the other ladies. Now, here's the thing that people don't understand about my skill set. I'm able to identify them in a couple of minutes, and then I can teach it. I'm not kidding you. The other swing coaches, or ski cross in this case, coaches, they can't do that. They don't know what the Sandra is doing differently than their ladies. I do. I can tell the other ladies so they can start doing that, and then she wouldn't win 80 to 20 events in a row. It will be much more even up. There will be actual competition, if you like. So there is a difference mechanically what she's doing with the other ladies, and the swing or ski crosses coaches can't identify that. But I can. That's my skill set. And people believe that, you know, uh, conceptual theory like, uh, you know, X factor. Stack and Tilt, Shamrock, Austinic, Sea Motion, or Natural Gold, whatever. Uh, but that's all theory. It doesn't matter. It's all bullshit, right? It's the same thing that Sean Fool is telling people, you know, oh, I'm mean, so perfect on top of it. There is no correlation between that and how you fucking hit the ball. There's no correlation there. But people make that sound really important. And people say, well, he was working with Tiger Woods. So he must know what he's doing. That's not how it works. Right, Tiger? Tiger said it himself. He can't win shit with that swing mechanic. <coughs> the show full of teaching. <coughs> you have to remember, these swing coaches doesn't understand the golf swing mechanic. If they did, they wouldn't teach it that way. Now, so this guy then tells me this story. Five years, 12 different teachers. And I do one Skype session, tell him what to work on specifically, but a skill set you need to have in golf that people can teach you because they don't know about it. And he started working on that. He went to the range, hit the ball better than ever. And then since then he's been staying with me because I'm the best in, in the game of golf because I actually understand this shit and can not just you know, understand it, I can explain it explicitly for the people out. Now, what can this lead to? Really interesting, actually. One of my tests went from 200 yard to 300 yard. There's a 100 yard increase, by the way. Because he, his mechanic was, you know, all over the map, if you like it. Was, I think it was the worst mechanic you can have as a golfer. And it took me a long time to figure out how to, you know, teach the golf mechanic in a way that allows people to do things, right? Anyway. You have to change your grip, you know, thumb off the shaft. You can't. The modern golf grip is a death move, if you didn't know that. If you're a two pro, this is the way. This thumb of the grip, that's what makes you, you know, struggle with the game. Anyway, a couple of years ago, I had this guy come along. He has the same information as you guys have here on YouTube. He told me he's going to go all in on my stuff, and I said, okay, change your grip, do the drills. And he started to do that. And I said, you can post a video when you do the drill. Because I knew one thing, he'd probably do it wrong. And he did. I said, that's not my instruction. And then he takes tell me straight up. Well, if he's bad doing the instruction, I said, yeah. Is there anywhere in my instruction that tell you it's going to feel fucking awesome and be the best fucking thing you ever done since having sex or something like that? And he will be like, like well, no. Keep doing. And follow my instruction because it will work. So this guy at age 50, right, he went from 240 yards to be able to push the ball out there 350 yards, right? So that's a 110 yard increase, right? Now, there's more to that story. Two, two years earlier, when he was 48 years old, he wanted to hit him more distance. So he was like 270 or something like that, right? So he went to a swing coach, you know, locally. They have the same education, and came in, Sean Foley, Pete Cowan. Monty Schumbro, Butch Harmon, they all have the same education model, and this coach also have the same education model. And he was just teaching him what they've been told to teach, and you know, this is what everybody agrees on, on in the field of golf. And he lost 30 yards. For two years he couldn't play this shitty game, right? 
And, you know, people do the same thing. They totally tell you when you struggle and you complain, well, keep the weight or work out in the end. No, he went never will. So after two years, obviously, he was kind of fed up and told me he's going to go Lima and stuff. And then he didn't follow my instruction. It's kind of weird if you think about it. I said, you have to, because you can't do that shit that you've been doing for two years. It doesn't work. Do my stuff. It's skills, not secrets. It's a skill. And he didn't believe me. You see, when people come into the field of golf and think it's, it's so difficult and complicated, people start assuming there must be a secret to the golf field. No, there is not. It's just to teach you something that is very difficult and complicated that leads to frustration, especially if you're a two group. Think about it. Jordan Spike lost his swinging game the last nine years. He was a pretty good player. And here's a message for Jordan Spike. If you watch this or you're a friend of Jordan, you can come by me. I won't charge you a fucking dime. I will just educate you about the golfing mechanic that you don't know even exists. You can play with Hans, you know, that guy you see here on YouTube. You can play with him and talk to him about this stuff also. And you will have, you know, <clears throat> the opportunity to win 50 plus majors with this stuff. You won a few already, so you can you know, take your time and maybe win 50 more or something like that. That would be nice, right? Because uh, most people don't know that Jordan Spice is pretty darn good player. But it doesn't matter how good player you are if your mechanics is absolute fucking shit. Remember, different name, same shit to teach you. Crap. It doesn't work. All the fixes they do for over the top slice hooks, blah blah blah, over the uh, hang, shank, shank, over, are not working. Right? So people, uh, <coughs> because when they look at the golf swing, <coughs> well, <coughs> well, the club head is open at the, the top position. That means that it will hit a weak fade or whatever, right? And right, there is no correlation there. People don't understand the golf swing at all, mechanically. But they believe they do, and they think they do, and that leads to a perception problem that people can't see this. The ski cross coaches can't see what Sandra Nelson is doing differently and teach that to transfer the skill to the other ladies they coach. They can't do that. I can. That's my skill set. Anyway, so this 50 year old, he started doing what I teach him, <coughs> and actually, you know, <coughs> follow my instruction. In about four to six weeks, he go from 240 yards to 350 yards, hit bomb suddenly. At the end of the season, he went on the vacation, shot minus one, one on the par, and uh, had a personal bath, and he was happy as motherfucker. He said, you know, game is fucking fun now, and enjoyable. And I said, thank you. And he was like, you know, this is real groundbreaking stuff. Because he didn't believe me, he told me, I, he I don't believe in the skills. He said, there must be a secret, because I've been struggling with this game for two years now, and and everybody, you know, and I said, no, there is no secrets. Only, secrets are only for people who doesn't understand, who doesn't know. All those concepts, emotion, austenic, channel log, X factor, second tilt, whatever, doesn't mean shit. Because all of them, if you ask them the questions, I can ask people, they can't answer them because they don't understand what they're doing. They only think they know, but that's not the same thing. If you didn't know that. Anyway. <clears throat> people have this idea, you know, and I had, in the last video I made, I had a guy coming and say, I have no credibility because, you know, I mentioned the word climate change. This guy who is a crazy you know, conspiracy nut, you know, uh, anti-vax and so on, um, probably, he's also a golf expert. But I'm not the one saying, you know, about climate change. There's thousands of people out there called scientists. Some of them work at the NASA. And those people that send people to the moon and satellites and, you know, whatever else they've been doing, you know, pretty good at the jobs, actually. Now, and science is interesting because science measures things. And 15 years ago, I was telling people about, uh, they were talking about 1.5 Celsius uh, and not raising the temperature, the Paris deal and so on. What happened was that I told people 50 years ago, the, the models and the, the prediction they're gonna, they are doing here right now are going to be wrong. It's going to get worse. 
<clears throat> because we have an unprecedented situation. We, we, we never had this situation the last 200 years here, where industries and human populations adding to the atmosphere CO2 values. And this never happened this way before. And it's going to cause effects that we can't account for. So your weather report, you read the weather report, and you look at the TV and go, yeah, it'll be rain tomorrow, probably going to be fine. And then suddenly, rain for that usually falls within a whole year, falls in two or three days. What just happened? They can't predict that because they don't understand that this is going to happen. Maybe one day they will be able to predict it accurately. At the moment, they struggle with that. They can only do what you know the models are telling them to do, right? And if the model is not predictable, you know, accurate and predictable enough, it could get worse than they can predict, and that has happened. So today, 26 years earlier, because they predicted 1.5 Celsius would be 2050. That's 26 years from now, and it's already happening today, 2024. So. When people try to do things and they can't do them, they start to believe in things, the concept, myths, legends, like uh, it must be your head that's moving. It must be that you're, you know, swing coaches made up shit all the time, the last 120 years, make people struggle. And people do this, you know, and have no evidence for it. There is no measurement, there is no evidence. When I teach, when I make a video for my you know, testers, I'm very explicit about what I want them to do. And then they send me a video back and I look at that and see if they can implement it the way I want. If they can't, I may have to you know, revise what I'm teaching in a way that allows them to isolate things better. Because it's skills, right? There's no secret. Once they have the skill, they can just do it forever. They can never then again struggle with what to do it. Now, that's for testers. The other people who have the same information you have on YouTube, you know, change your grip, you have to, that's my instruction. People teaching, you know, if you're a Tupro, or a caddy for a Tupro, and you're watching this, I'm teaching this, you cannot use the thumb on the shaft. So if you want your, if you're a caddy and you have a Tupro, you have to tell them you need to start working on this stuff. And they usually that doesn't want to because it will change the game, the swing. But I'm teaching amateurs and two pros the same, there's no difference. But I'm teaching people something that other people can't teach you out there. Well, I teach you skills. And you know the movie from back in 2008, right? I have a specific business skill set that I will find and hunt you down. Take it, right? Kicking ass, taking numbers. But skill sets are not you know, what swing coaches teach. They teach you a concept, right? I mean, Bochorno couldn't teach Tiger Woods to hit the fail. He couldn't tell him explicitly how to do it. If you don't know how you do something, it's very, very hard to repeat it. So when Jordan Spike is hitting a quadruple Masters and this guy was able to win, you know, such, you're going to ask yourself what happened. Well, when you change someone's swing in a way that usually means that they have a little bit more timing and coordination, it doesn't need to have to be much, like in Lydia Coe's case. It changes them over time. So at some, it, it works for a little bit, but at some point it starts to break down because it's more difficult. And when they start getting to that point, they lose their game. Usually it can also lead to the losing the card because they may struggle with putting and something like that. And suddenly, what was so easy for them to do, suddenly becomes a huge fucking problem and they can't fix it. And Lydia Ko, she fired her caddies, and the next caddy, and the next caddy, and the next caddy, and the next coach, and so on, because they couldn't figure out what happened. I know what happened to Lydia Ko. You know, I can tell her if I ever meet her, or she meet me. I can tell her what happened. I can show her, because it's on YouTube videos, I can tell her explicitly what to look for, and she will go, oh, I didn't even knew that. Yeah, I know. And that was eight years ago, I said, yeah, she was like, Ooh, man, you're good. Yeah, I know. I look at something and two minutes later, oh, I figured it out. Not all the time. It takes, sometimes it takes more time because, you know, 
people are really funny that way. Anyway, I'm, my brain is telling me that uh, uh, I'm starting to lose my coherency here. It becomes difficult to, you know, see straight, as I like to say it. Uh, I have something called MECFS. People call it long COVID. Also nowadays, because people, you know, the COVID, they think uh, long COVID is different than MECFS. No, it's the same shit. It's the same shit with different fucking names. And it's a uh, energy fatigue, energy recovery crash system, illness. That means if I exhaust myself, which I'm doing right now, talking to a camera, I'm gonna suffer from this, that, this, after I'm finished talking. But you have a lack of energy, you can't work. That means I can't go out there and market myself, I can't go out there and, you know, traveling all over the world. So, Jordan's pipe, if you or your friends are looking at this and watching this, come and visit me. I can, I can play with horns, I can sit there and drink coffee. And then I can educate you about the golfing mechanic that any swing coach on tour or elsewhere cannot teach you. They don't know. There's no one on tour or elsewhere that can teach you the still the stuff I know about the golfing mechanics. I've proven that time and time again. And also all those people that have the same information as you have here on YouTube has proven that it works if they follow the instruction. You have to change your grip. And whenever the weather here uh, allows it, I will go outside and just do the same video I did last year. I will just do a video about the grip and a couple of drills that I'm you know, teaching here on YouTube. And if you do that for about six months or something like that, it's going to get better in your course. Some people here already call me a genius, right, that did the work. Other people, they come to my channel and say, Hey, I don't think it's a good role because you're not credible because I want to keep my thumb on the shaft. Well, that's what's causing you all the problems you have to change. And in my last video, I talked about this 15-year-old uh, kid who's playing with Tom off the shaft who uh, qualified for the corn tour. And uh, not only did he qualify, he entered, went, uh, made a cut and ended up top 20, 15-year-old. And he's not using the thumb on the shaft that everybody tells you to do. Kind of funny. But you become a golf expert on all this information about the golf swing that people doesn't understand doesn't work. It doesn't work. So all this information you have about the golf swing mechanic is wrong. And you don't even know that. Now, the interesting thing about people who are or conspiracy people is when you tell them facts, you know, this is the difference between, you know, science and, you know, conspiracy is that science, they, when they get new information, like with the climate, when the climate change and models and such, they improve the model's prediction. At some point, they will figure out how to predict how much rain is going to fall, actually. Because they get measurement and models in place and they go like, ah, oh, this is why this is happening, so now they can start accurately predict it better and better. That's how science works. That's what I do. My golf swing mechanic that I developed is the best in the world, and it's the only golf swing system that actually works. The more information you have for me, the better and faster you're going to be, and you'll be able to be more consistent, and so on, and so on, and so on. And all you need to do is just do that because I'm not going to educate people what, why, and how. All you need to do is change your grip and start doing that and, you know, do the drills, follow my instruction actually, and you're going to get better at golf. Because my system is the only one that actually works. All the other people teaching you good stuff, it's going to make you struggle. And just to end this, Trackman stat shows that 90% of every golfer in the world will never reach a single hand again. Less than 1% will be scratch players. That means that all they can do in modern golf and elsewhere is teach you to struggle with the game. They can't teach you to play the game the way it is you know, meant to be played. And everybody accepts that as, that, well, uh, the game is you know, it's very, very difficult. No, it's not difficult. I figure out how it works. So, you know, for me it's not difficult. I can teach you so it makes people go, well, you know, it can't be this easy to tell you. Uh, so what happens when you hit the ball? Well, I'm always hitting it like this. You know. There you go. But this is too easy, they say. 
And I said, well, that's because it is. Once you understand something, then you're able to do it. And what I teach makes people be able to do things in a natural sequence. That means that your brain can store the information and just do it, like walking, talking, thinking, planning dinner, using the, your cell phone or the computer or something like that, or driving a car or riding a bike. At some point, you can just fucking do it. But until you get there, uh, because in modern golfing mechanics, what they teach you is to interrupt all that. So your brain can never really fully just do it. This is what happened to Johnny Sang, Nick Fowler at some point, Lydia Ko at some point. I think, well, think Fowler and Ko, Lydia Ko had the same teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a correlation there. Ooh, maybe there is, maybe there is. And this is what happens, you look down too, and they can't fix it often. Sorry, Jordan, you know, your swing coach can't fix this for you. No one else on tour can fix it for you either. But if you come and get educated by me, Jordan Spite. How about those 15 majors? Hmm, that'd be nice, right? Real nice. And I know some people will say, well, I, think, I don't think he, you know you can do that role. And I usually say, well, if I wasn't this ill, I would be marketing myself a lot out there. Now I'm just, you know, teasing people. Because here's the funny thing, I can do all this shit that I talk about. Because I have the measurement, I have the evidence. I'm doing science, I'm not, you know, making shit up. Even if people think I do. But that, that's not the same thing, you know. Mm. Kind of weird. But in a good way.